good day folks welcome to my youtube channel today we're going to look at the trial exam of the um, free state province in 2023 i'm going to look at the multiple choice first and then i'll do the other questions let's start with the multiple choice now it says here this is quite an easy one a newton's second law of motion is expressed as f net is equal to m a this equation consists of um this equation in terms of the physical quantities it consists of a vector and a scalar quantity and a vector so it says um it consists of one vector and two scalar quantity no and two vector quantity and one scalar yes and then the three vector quantities and three scalar quantities that's wrong right 1.2 it says the acceleration due to gravity on earth is g um from that formula it says g is equal to g m mass of the earth over radius of the earth square now it says what is an acceleration due to gravity on planet which has a double mass of the earth and half the radius of the earth so um the 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 the, the, the gravitational acceleration at earth is what is 1g right now let's look at when we when we double the mass i'm going to leave out the g so it's going to be double m Okay, let me put the G. It's going to be double M, and then there's a G. And then it says double the mass of the Earth and half the radius of the Earth. So if we half the radius of the Earth, it's going to be that. It's going to be half R squared. And then mathematically, that is going to be 2GM over... 1 over 4 r square which is this one is what is g right so let me let me let me just write it here because of space it's going to be 2 over 1 over 4 and then this is represented by g right because g is that so 2 and then we change this uh, division into multiplication it's going to be 2 over 1 multiplied by um, 4 over 1 it's going to be 8 g so the answer here is d i hope that makes sense guys it's going to be eight times more um the than the planet earth all right it says in 1.3 it says uh, two cars p and r are traveling in opposite direction as shown in the diagram below um car r has a greater mass than the car p and it's moving at higher speed um the two cars collide the head on you can see in the diagram both cars they collide and they have different masses and different speed it says which one of the following best describe the magnitude of the force experienced by the car during the collision guys what i can tell you even if even if um without looking the options there whatever car whatever speed and the one is stationary and the one is moving at high speed the one has a greater mass it doesn't matter the force that they exact on each other is what is equal so it says number a both cars experience the equal force but equal force in opposite direction let's look at b um car r experiences a greater force no car r experiences a greater force no the force depends on the ratio of masses no so the answer there is a right it says a ball 1.4 is ball is dropped vertically uh, downwards um, off the ground now it says the velocity versus time graph not drawn into scale it represents the motion of the ball ignore the effect of the friction of the air friction so this ball I'll assume is a thrown from the height from there and it's going down so if it's going down um, its velocity is going to increase while it goes down and then it reaches the ground which is the ground its point what it's this that is when it bounces so it bounces here so here's the bounce there and then what's happening to the velocity at B at B it decreases 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 and reach the maximum height which is what it's C the maximum height at C and then what's happening to the velocity as it goes down it increases now here's the velocity increases there to what to D and then it bounces again 
and then it bounces again and just reach the maximum height so this is D right the bounce right I hope that makes sense guys now it says which who at which point label on the graph does the ball reach its maximum height after the first bounce so it reaches uh, at, at the maximum height at what at C so the answer there is C right 1.5 it says two boxes X and Y on the same have the same masses very important are lifted up at constant velocity very important through the vertical height of height h and it's pulled up a frictionless surface by the same force f as shown in the diagram one and diagram two respectively as if you look here okay we have an object box which is box x is lifted up vertical upwards there's a force applied there and of course there's a gravitational force there right and the displacement that it in in box x is gonna uh, is gonna travel is is the same as the height right and then right let's look at diagram two Diagram 2, it has a different displacement. The displacement there, it's the hypotenuse there. and But the height, look at the displacement and the height is not the same. And the force is, there's a force there. And there's a gravitational force, which is the FG parallel. Which is, um, the, in this case, the two forces, the work done by the two forces are going to be the same because they are uh, conservative forces. The gravitational force are conservative force. So the work done by the gravitational FG parallel is going to be the same as the work done by FG uh, for X and Y, for both X and Y, right? But yeah, if you look here, the displacement in diagram X is the same as the height. But if you look at the displacement of diagram 2, the displacement is bigger than the height. Why? Because if you look at the displacement, there is the longer side of this right angle triangle, which is bigger. The, the, the longer side, the displacement is bigger than the height. So this simply means that there has to be um, more work done by the force here. There's more work done by the force here, by the applied force compared to the work done by the force here. So here um, in diagram, well, we're going to say the 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 work done by force the work done by force on object x is going to be smaller than the work done by the work it's going to be the work done by the force on box x is going to be smaller than the for, the work done by the force on object y due to the displacement because um the displacement at box x is what is lesser than the displacement is lesser than the displacement at box y right so from this definition that says work by the work done by the um, work done by the force is going to be force displacement cos theta um, what is going to be different let's say this is for y work done by the force for y um, is equal to f delta x cos theta. The direction that they they both have the same direction. That direction is going to be zero degrees. Zero degrees. It's going in the same direction with the displacement. But for x, the 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 what? The displacement is smaller. And for 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 box y is bigger so that means the work done there it's going to be what it's going to be bigger so the answer here the option here it says um the, the it says which one of the following st statement is correct the gravitational potential energy for the boxes is the what is the same um, because they are in the same height and they're reaching the same height and they're everywhere as they move the height is going to be the same so the gravitational potential energy for both boxes is going to be the same and it says the amount of work done by F is the same for boxes no 
Um, so the answer is not A. Uh, is the same, the gravitational potential age is the same for both boxes? Yes. It says the amount of work done by X is more than that. That's right. So the answer there is B. One point six is the Doppler effect. It says a police car with a siren on moves at constant speed towards do you know towards it's gonna be plus divided by minus in the formula. Towards the observer. Which one of the following describe how the observed frequency and the pitch differ? It says which one of the following describe how the observed frequency and the pitch. Now the frequency and the pitch they are directly related. So if the frequency increases, um, the pitch increases. They are directly related. They have a direct relation. So um, the higher the as 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 as, as um, the 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 police car sign is moving towards what is observed by the peach, what is observed by the listener or the observer there, um, it's gonna be it's moving towards right. So if it's moving towards, that means the frequency is gonna be high. So it's a higher frequency. It's supposed to be higher pitch. Because, um, so that's not an option, that's not an option. So C, it's higher frequency and higher pitch, and that's not an option. So the answer there is C. I hope I make sense, guys. 1.7, it says, two small identical sphere on an insulated stent, charges of positive 2 coulombs and negative 4 coulombs, respectively, as you can see there below, right? It says, each sphere, um, each each sphere experiences a force F. So the force is F there. Now it says when when they are distance X apart um, they brought so the distance for them and the force here is F so the distance is what is X. Now it says um, they brought together and touch each other and then separated to their original distance. So this is before they touch, and then when they touch each other, there there will be a charge transfer in both of them. So it's gonna come from this one to this one, um, and then now it says here um, there will be a new charge. Okay. All right. The magnitude of the electrostatic force. Um, is V and H is in terms of F. Okay, let me erase that. I can't hear what is happening there. Now, let's go back. I didn't read it properly. It says when they are distance apart, they brought together and touch and then separated to the half original to their distance. So now they, well after they touch each other, they are ha they have new charges, which is we we're going to calculate. It's going to be negative one, negative one. I'm going to show you how. And the, the distance now is half. The distance it was x, now it's x over 2, which is it's half of x, right? So let's calculate the, the new charges. There's a change in the new charges, so we calculate the two new. It's going to be 2, 1 plus 2, 2 over 2, which is um, the 2, 1. Let's say this one is 2, 1, and this is 2, 2. So it's going to be 2 plus negative 4 divided by 2 which is going to be negative 1 coulomb. So that's why I said it's going to be negative 1, negative 1. So the charges now, they have changes. They've changed to that. Now, now the question is, is the magnitude of the electrostatic force um, which the sphere exerts on each other while the charges are changed and the distance has changed, right? So let's, let's, let, let's see the original one. The original one, it was... F, the the force it was F is equal to G M um, uh, charge. Sorry, um, uh, come on. It's K Q one Q two over R square, which is it's gonna be K, and it's k it was it was um, it was two times what four, which is two times four 
over x square which is it's what it's 8k over x square this is was the the original force when the charges were still 2 coulombs and 4 coulombs and the distance was x apart now let's calculate let's see the new force now the new force now it's k now the 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 charges remember now it's 1 and 1 so it's going to be 1 times 1 over and the distance they said now it has been changed to a half so it's going to be x over 2 it's x over 2 what square which is it's going to be k over which is it's going to be k x over 4 um um x square which is this is going to be k um 1 over 4x square which is when you look at this when you look at this it's going to be it's going to be um it's going to be um when you change that it's going to be um, you have one there it's going to be one over one over four and then this is the same as this one right so what we're looking at here it's eight times the force which is here it's eight times the force so here it's going to be um, it's k okay let me put it like this it's k x square so it's going to be one over one times by four over one and then that's f right and that's represent f so it's going to be four times so it ca it comes from eight times to what to four times so it has decreased by half so the answer here it's going to be it's going to be a half Gu guys the answer is not going to be 4f here right it's not going to be 4f the answer there so the answer there it's going to be half from it has decreased by half right it's 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 two times less from this so if it comes from four from eight to four so that means it has decreased by it has it is it's 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 two times less it's two times less than that so the answer is this one not this one guys 1.8 in the second diagram shown below voltmeters v1 v2 and v3 have a high resistance voltmeters always have a high resistance that's why they're connected in parallel now it says the battery has an internal resistance there um, and the switch s and the connecting wire have a negligible resistance now let's look at the circuit the current here from the battery it moves there and it passed as resistor that means that the one is series and then if the switch is closed it passed that one with the same so that means these two resistors they are in what in series right so the uh, potential dividers the current is the same right it says uh, when switch s is open let's look when the switch s is open when the switch s is open there there will be no current at all in the circuit right there will be no current at all in the circuit and then uh, these two voltmeters these two voltmeters will read zero zero voltmeter zero volts right zero volts there now when the switch is closed there um, okay when the switch is open at zero volts this one will read what the EMF right okay no current at all when the switch is open no current in the circuit the V1 will read the EMF and this one is going to be zero zero right now let's see when the switch is closed now when the switch is closed this one reads the V external right it's the v external right and then there will be readings here right there will be readings here so the v external here will be divided so this this v external it will be the sum of v1 and v2 okay guys now let's go to the question how will the reading on v1 and v2 be affected when the switch is open okay there will be no change in v1 no there will be a change when the switch is open um when the when, when the switch is open let's say it was closed before and then now it's open there will be no change yes there will be a change so that is the wrong option 
um, there will be no change there will be no change okay that's not an option so what is going to happen in v1 the v1 when the switch is open it's gonna increase because when it was closed before so it was reading the v external now it's open when it's open it reads what the emf that means that there's an increase from here to here there's an increase so what's going to happen in these two values when the switch is open they're going to decrease to zero as i've mentioned that is going to be zero so the answer is that one it's not an option so the answer is c right let's go to 1.9 1.9 it says the diagram below represented the simple generator which rotates clockwise right now this is a generator guys it's generating electricity as you can see there there's a bulb now it says which one of the following um, um re following graphs represents the induced emf versus time for one full rotation starting from the horizontal position so when it's there in the horizontal position the induced emf is what is that is maximum so and this is a if you look at the the rings the yeah that's a what that's in ac right it's not a dc so this graph and this graph is not an option because this is an ac these are the graphs for the what dc right so the the options are here in these two but it says which um graph that represents the full rotation of the core starting from the horizontal which is when it starts from the horizontal i told you that the emf is going to be maximum so it's going to be that one but it starts from the horizontal it says yeah the emf is going to be zero so this is not an option so the option is a and the full rotation it's zero degrees 90 180 right um, the last question last question I've answered this question in the Western Cape trial of 2024 of this year's trial so I've answered this question you can go there but I'll do it again 1.10 it says the diagram below the diagram below represent three energy level X Y and Z in a Satan atom it says the energy difference between X and Y and Z sorry is twice the energy difference of what X and Y so it says the energy difference between Y and Z that means the energy difference here it's what it's 3e guys when you see a diagram like this you must know it's emission line spectra it's emission line spectra right what is the emission line spectra the emission line spectra that means there's an energy that is released when the atom it comes from the highest energy level to the energy level right um so yeah it comes from the highest energy level to the lowest energy levels that means there's an energy that is released right and then they said the energy difference from y to z it's three times the energy of what is it three times it's twice not three times it's twice they said it's twice the energy of what y to z so that means the energy from <laughs> from energy from x to y it's 1e right now if you look at the energies from x to y x to z sorry it's a 3e right okay now the question now now before the question it says the wavelength um the wavelength emitted as a result of what of p if you look at p from there to there so it coming from the excited state which is the highest energy level to the low energy level so they said the wavelength from x to y it's lambda now it says what is the wavelength of the photon emitted during transition to from x to z so they wanted the wavelength from x to z guys must remember this thing the energy from this formula that says 
hc over lambda the energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength the bigger the energy the shorter the wavelength or the smaller the wavelength right so if the energy difference from x to z it's three times that means the 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 energy from x to z it's three times that means the wavelength is going to be three times um three times longer <coughs> okay right look at the energy level the energy level is increasing it's increasing three times that means that the wavelength is going to do what decrease three times by but the decrease de three times is going to be one over three lambda so the answer here it's what it's d i hope i make sense guys check the other video maybe i explained it different there cheers bye